One of the biggest consequences from getting into anime through Dragon Ball Z is simply that I tended to gravitate towards anime that was like Dragon Ball Z. My experience with anime as a whole growing up didn't really tread too far from the shonen waters. And while a couple titles here and there pushed the boundaries of what shonen was, like Trigun, Cowboy Bebop, and Full Metal Alchemist to an extent, all of those titles you know, shared a lot of common themes, and I didn't really branch out through experiencing them. And that brings us to today's anime at hand, because it was the first time that I really experienced anime that wasn't 100% confined to the shonen waters. Now, it's still very largely a shonen, but it has other elements kind of baked in that really set it apart and for the time it was wildly different than anything that i had ever experienced today we're going to be talking about devil is a part-timer devil is a part-timer released towards the end of my time in the military and the four years i spent in the military really marked the second awakening of anime for me and marks a period where I was ravenously consuming all of the anime in front of me. It's where a bulk of the anime I have ever consumed really comes from and showcased my exploration of different genres and connecting with other fans of anime and being shown all of their recommendations. So Devil's a Part Timer was a new title that I stumbled across myself and was the first to really introduce me into the slice of life genre. To date, Devil is a Part-Timer is really the only slice of life style anime I've ever seen. And the combination of its shonen elements as well as its comedy really made it palatable for somebody who had never ventured into those waters before. <laughs> Devil is a part-timer is pretty unique in what it brings to the table and how it manages to blend all of these genres together to create something that's greater than the sum of its parts. Not only is it slice of life, not only is it shonen, not only is it comedic, but it's also an isekai to boot. There are so many elements that are coming together in Devil is a part-timer that just makes it really interesting to consume, especially for somebody who had never really approached some of those genres before or had very minimal exposure to them. From the word go, Devil is a Part-Timer is all about subverting your expectations. When we start the series, it comes across as a typical shonen, a typical high fantasy fight anime where you have the forces of good versus the forces of evil except right away it differentiates itself by having us experience all of this from the point of view of the villain from the devil and it only ramps up exponentially from there the devil and his forces are overrun forcing him to full retreat and he opens a portal to get away but on the other side of the portal he is transported to modern day japan and to further subvert your expectations He's without his powers. So almost immediately, we are hit with the classic bait and switch setup of an isekai. And it really sets the tone for what we're going to expect for the rest of the show. From here, you see the devil who takes on the name Sadao Mao and his trusty Lieutenant Al Ciel, who takes on the name Shiro Ashia, start to come to grips with their new reality and survey their surroundings. It's typical fish out of water fair, lots of cultural misunderstandings, and they eventually have a run in with the cops and flex their magic, what little they have left, to gain information on the world around them, to which there is only one conclusion on what they can do. They must acquire a home. They must acquire jobs so that they can acquire wealth so that they can start taking over this world. All of this takes place in the span of just a few minutes. They really quickly establish with some really hand-waving mechanics 
that they are now based out of this world. They come to grips with that pretty fast and make it clear that that's not the focus uh, of the show. The show is going to be focused on their struggles fitting in in human society. And as someone who's never seen a slice of life, this was really oddly refreshing to have conflict and tension that didn't revolve around fighting some huge battle or besting a bad guy in a match of wits. To just have their bad guy be rent was really refreshing and made me realize that maybe Slice of Life has a lot more to offer than I really gave it credit for. I definitely think the comedic aspects of this make it really easy to dip your toes into. I think a lot of people experience this sort of awakening in the isekai genre when Konosuba came out because it introduced all of these different elements. There's the harem aspect, there's the isekai aspect, there's slice of life, and then there's the comedic aspect, but it does it in a, a very respectful way and it's always on brand and on tone. It knows what it is. And because it's a parody, it has to understand what it is being a parody of. And through that knowledge, it essentially becomes a perfect form of an isekai, the perfect form of a shonen. I would relate it to Metalocalypse and Death Clock. It is a parody band, but because it knows the subject matter that it's being a parody of, it essentially becomes a really, really good band and put out a lot of really good music. Even if the subject matter was over the top and silly at times, the packaging was so on point that you overlook all of that. All of that to say, Devil is a part-timer, understands that it's a parody, understands the comedic aspect that it's going for, and executes it on such a level that makes it really enjoyable and digestible. Seeing the devil become a part-time worker or the fictionalized version of McDonald's called McRonald's is something that you didn't know you wanted or needed until you see it. Now, there are a few issues that I have with the show that are symptomatic of most anime that have comedic elements, and it really just comes down to the fan service. Shiho is a human high school girl who falls in love with her co-worker, Satan, and her character can be summed up in three words, naivety and boobs. It's not the worst in the world. Soul Eater definitely had a lot worse fan service, but there are times when this gets kind of icky. Especially when you consider that she is 16 years old and the devil is 300 years old. And even then, he's portrayed as 21, which still is a five year difference at such a young age. It it just comes across wrong, man. That being said, when they explore her character outside of naivety and boobs, She's a really good stand-in for the audience. She is a human who experiences the paranormal and the bizarre that is the devil and his world. And a lot of the situations and comedic events are straight out of a sitcom. I honestly found myself enjoying those moments and wanting more of those moments rather than get caught up in the, the dramatic events within the series. You see, as the series goes on, those shonen aspects do return. The devil is followed to Japan by his nemesis and adversary, the hero Amelia, who starts to go by the name Imiyusa in this new world. And she is our first point of tension and conflict for our main character. While Satan is trying to amass wealth and live a relatively normal life, Emmy doesn't trust him whatsoever and is trying to learn what his ultimate plans and ideas are so that she can thwart him if necessary. All the while, she also has to find a way to live in Japan and takes up her own job on the side so that she can earn money. Things quickly develop though as we realize that these two aren't the only entities to have come through the portal and are now in Japan. There are outside forces at work and we get periodic cutbacks to the world in which they came from where they are planning both against the devil and against our hero Emmy. The first big climax and the first plot twist 
for the whole show is that the main force that they're encountering is a joint effort between the church that Emmy has served and one of the disgraced generals that was following Satan working together to eliminate the both of them. This is where the show reverts back to its shonen roots and we see the devil regain his powers and have a full on fight with his own general and the church. We get a glimpse at his immense power and he quickly dispatches the two and through it we gain a new member of the cast. The disgraced general Lucifer has now been reclaimed by the forces of Satan. And then he moves in to the small one bedroom apartment that both Satan and Al Ciel already occupy, thus ratcheting up the situational comedy. And from here, the rest of the episodes play out in a pretty similar fashion. You have the day to day slice of life as your mainstay and then the cycle of having to deal with the other world bleeding in and trying to interfere with Satan and Emmy. Devil is a Part-Timer is not a very long anime, it's only 13 episodes long, so it doesn't have a lot of time to explore various themes, so it generally sticks to what it knows, and once it has established its routine, it generally stays in that area. This creates for a really compact and really compelling story, but it does leave you wanting more. The ending, while satisfying, just makes you want to see more of what they're going to do and where they end up. And while a season two has been announced, it has yet to actually come to fruition. I highly recommend checking out Devil is a Part-Timer. If anything, it's only 13 episodes. That's not a very long time commitment to give it a chance. Whether you're a fan of Shonen or whether you're a fan of Slice of Life, I think that this does enough on both sides of the table to warrant being checked out no matter where you fall on that spectrum. This was my first experience of Slice of Life, and while I haven't returned yet, re-watching this made me realize how much I did enjoy it. And whether that's from growing up and actually having a lot of workplace interactions, the different situations and character relationships was really refreshing and on point with the pattern that I'm seeing in my taste preferences since I've started rewatching anime. I love when we get to explore different relationship dynamics, characters interacting across the spectrum, not only your main cast of characters, but with side characters as well. And Devil's a Part-Timer does that pretty well. It has a compact cast. It doesn't have a, a large cast of side characters, but everybody in that main cast is pretty fleshed out. And honestly, this does feel like a sitcom. And that was really refreshing for me to experience something completely different yet still pretty familiar in what it is trying to accomplish and what it does end up ultimately accomplishing. Devil is a part-timer is going to be the reason I watch more Slice of Life and more just casual anime that isn't all high fantasy and fight and battle focused. While I might not be ready for something like Yuri on Ice, I am absolutely going to check out more things that are casual in their content nature. And if you have never experienced Science of Life, I highly recommend you check this out because maybe it'll be your gateway too. It absolutely has further opened the door for me on what anime can be. And at the end of the day, that's all I can ask for. And that's all I can recommend for you guys as well. Give it a chance to explore New Horizons. Because sometimes you'll be surprised. And the world stops being as fun a place when you stop opening yourself up to new experiences. So... Say yes to Devil's a Part-Time of the Day, and maybe it'll lead you down a road that you didn't know was possible. <laughs> 